Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Foolish Tech Show. This is uh, Michael, as usual, here on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. I'm here with uh, Brantley, as you all know, waving a lightsaber over there, and our uh, tank commander, Tank. Um, very hey. easy to remember his name. Um, we're probably going to be joined by a couple others later, but uh, we'll get started regardless. Um, First, let's oh. go over the very important fact. Okay. Do you know what came out last night? What came out last night? I'll give you a hint. The lightsaber, the Star Wars, Star Wars came out last night. Oh, okay. Not, they didn't come. The the most recent trailer for it came out. The most recent trailer for it. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Have you not watched that yet? I've watched the I earlier one. I've watched the earlier one. I'm going ones, to watch that but I right haven't now. watched the new trailer. I, well, I got the link for it, so hold on. Okay, stick uh, it in yeah, the uh, stick it in the public. Absolutely chat. right now. Stick it in the public uh, chat. I'm gonna stick it in the public chat right now. It's uh, it's it's awesome. I can't wait. And they started selling tickets for it as well. So <laughs> they did. Oh, okay. Yeah, it comes out December 18th. I'm not gonna buy my tickets. I'm gonna wait until probably after Christmas time to go see it. Uh, I don't know. I was kind of uh, when my office when I was working back in uh, in the uh, early. Um, 2000s. Um, Tank, were you able to uh, see when that? There, I when saw did, you join after it. When did um, um, the, the remake Star Wars come out? Well, anyway, Jar Jar Banks. Um, anyway, I was I was upset that the, our work took us out and we saw the movie in a nice theater and everything, but of course, you know, being that it was... The, the first three episode, Star Wars were dreadful. I won't watch yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Being that it was uh, episode Actually, one, I'll take I that back. Upset. Episode one and two were dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I don't. There, it's like Nightmare three on Elm Street was too. Awesome. Three wasn't. Wasn't. I just, it could have been I worse. I just don't count the first two. Three was good. Three should have been the only film they done out of the first ones. Uh, it was uh, all, you, the only you one. You had watchable. to have the build up. It was. It was all worth. No, you time. didn't. It was terrible. I fell asleep. Twenty minutes into the first I, you one. You know how many years I freaking got. You know how many freaking years I waited, and then my work was like, "Oh, guys, guess what? You did well, and so we're gonna take you all out for free to go see the movie when it, you know, it's opening day or whatever." And and it was freaking awesome. And I actually went and saw it in the afternoon, so it wasn't even like uh, it w was was actually kind of bearable. And it was a big theater, so it was it was well, I mean, seating. But but. but but it was just a horrible. I mean, I, I I loved the experience if it was any other movie, you know. Um, I, I enjoyed the first two still, but I did enjoy the third one the most. But yeah, I, I was, liked a lot of the backstory uh, and the panning up to that. Like, but you do understand it was the closer you got towards the ones we originally fell in love with, four, five, and six, that uh, you know that that we started loving it more and. That's why I'm hoping that these subsequent ones will maybe um, pick up some of that, hopefully, at least in the first one, but well, no, we'll see where one, they take it. This one, they're, it's going after these, and like, if you watch, well, I the, know, new, so... if you go watch the new trailer right now, it's only... Yeah, these, these are like 30 years later. Just, yeah, watch the new trailer I, I right know, now. I know, hence, hence, hence the reason they can have Harrison Ford in it. Um, God... Which, Watch the new trailer right now. I'll keep people entertained until you then. do that. You do that. So, because this won't interest any of these people, I don't think. But uh, Bloomberg also has a, a nifty little game they came out with for uh, uh, learning how to play the stock market and seeing what it's all about. Um, it's pretty fun little, it's like a little flash game kind of thing, but. Basically, like it gives you historical stock references, and it lets you click your mouse when you want to buy, and then you hold it until you want to let it go. And basically, wherever you click buy is the point that you purchased it at, and wherever you let it go is where you sell it at. And it, it's kind of fun to try to play along and get a higher sell than uh, other people. I appear to be fairly decent at it, but I also like hold out for the long run. So there were some good buys I had where I was like 98% above everybody else that was playing that uh, stock, and then there were some that I was like 40% better than everyone else playing that stock. But it's a lot nicer to be able to tell when you have like a little graph in green or red if it's good or bad, and 
it didn't wow. have the, the date time there, so that, that looks that, good. Yeah, it is. That new Star Wars is going to be awesome. That's so what, what do you think? What Skywalker, dark side or light side of the Force? The is that the the stormtrooper guy? No, Luke Skywalker. Is it going to be dark side or light side? Oh, he's going to be light side. You think to start out the movie? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt yeah. he will be. <clears throat> like he's he's going to be all like if if they play to any tune like any of the books that have come out after the Star Wars. Then he did dabble gonna, in the dark side. He's going to be like a, a super Yoda type Jedi. Like, he'll be all... Uh, yes, but in the books, time. he did go to the dark side for a short time. Mm. Okay, so I just watched it, and that was fantastic. <laughs> um, that was incredible. And um, so... Uh, 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 Princess Leia um, was in that. A uh, brief sneak peek there at the end of it, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, so They're all in it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, excellent. I know, but the only ones I'm recognizing so far are, are Han and, uh, and Leia. But, um, uh, I didn't miss anything important. Yeah. Morning. You didn't recognize Chewbacca? Oh, well, Chewbacca. I'm sorry. Yes, Chewbacca. <laughs> It's the and same the guy. Millennium like Harry, Harry Wookie. I mean, it's yeah, it's not hard to miss him out. I mean, he might as well be uh, uh, whatever. Uh, what was it? Um, cousin Her It, right? Isn't Chewbacca Cousin It effectively? No, it's like getting the awesome. same guy to play Jason Voorhees in the next Friday the 13th. What does that mean? Nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Actually, the same guy, the only one guy played Jason Voorhees more than a few times, and that was Kane Hodder. Mm -hmm. well, more than anybody else. It would be hard to find another guy of that height willing to do that costume for that long of filming, though. Well, you see, they didn't let Kane Hodder do Voorhees and Freddy vs. Jason because he was so much taller than Robert England, and they mm -hmm. wanted a more size match. Oh, okay. he was just so much bigger oh. yeah. in general. I'd love to get started um, with. Uh, they might let you. All right. So, Why not? if you guys want. Anyway, um, my uh, my show today, I was going to try to focus on um, the uh, smaller form factor PCs that are out there and um, some interesting things you might be able to do with uh, them, uh, both smaller boxes, uh, bare bone boxes, and our pre um, pre populated boxes, as well as compute sticks. And, um, I don't know what that compute stick is under your thingy there, but um, I have that remote control with it, and it works, I think. Oh, interesting. Um, but uh, but that's not. Um, it's actually this is a um, this is actually mm. a whole PC with Windows 8 mm. and and, and uh, two gigs and. And I guarantee you that's the same remote control that I use with my TV. That I purchased for ten dollars on Amazon somewhere. Ten dollars. Well, this is going for one hundred and twenty. So I, I don't, I don't well, know. They showed a ten dollar remote with it. Yeah. Well, that, I think that's why it's one hundred and twenty and not ninety four, like the one right above it. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I actually yeah. know that one above it looks like it might have better specs. No. <laughs> well, okay. Well, whatever. But anyway, listen. The point is, it doesn't. But uh, the point, the point is that they have these compute sticks, which are essentially entire computers on an HDMI stick that you you plug into uh, your TV, and um, and then run, you know, whatever you want to. And primarily, obviously, we would want to be running some sort of media center, typically something that has a uh, big screen experience um, to interact with on your TV. Um, but these are great um, things to do it with. Now, typically, these compute sticks sold by Intel, um, and uh, this probably um, similarly down here on this one here on my screen, uh, those are... Uh, uh, you know, going to be populated with Windows uh, 10 probably, um, and that um, is all well and good. But I had some other things in mind for using them. They are computers, so they can run any operating system you want. They're complete uh, systems, um, typically with with sound, graphics, every everything, networking. <laughs> now, now, however, with the stick, it's only wired. Um, I would be interested. 
I would actually be very interested in running Windows 10 on something like that rather than a flavor of Linux just for the fact that you don't expect that to work well. Yeah. Well, let me, let me let me let me get on and do the show as I'm gonna as I'm gonna present yeah. it, and we can get yeah. in, into the decision about what your preference might be towards the end. But My there preference are is figuring out which, what would work actually work well or not. Well, exactly, and so we'll we'll get to all of that. So basically, though, there are a lot of different things to consider, and yeah, you want to consider what the operating system is of your unit. Now, these are just the compute sticks. So let's go. Let me see what I got here. Can you? You guys can see this, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, those are the compute sticks again, and here we start to also see um, some pre-populated um, mini PCs that come with RAM and um, the processor as well, and some sort of SSD in them. Now this one has Chrome OS on it. It's a buck fifty, very inexpensive. But you can see there's several uh, others. These are usually in the range of anywhere from $100, like you saw with those compute sticks, to um, you know to $300 or more, depending upon what you're getting in the power. As you can see, some of them has have Core i3, some of them have lower uh, Celeron-based um, system-on-chips uh, SOCs. Um, As you go through some of these pages, can you post them in the public chat? The links to them. Uh, yeah, so um, these are just Newegg links. I hope um, you know that doesn't bother any of you. You don't have to buy from Newegg, but uh, just to give you an idea, it kind of makes it uh, to show. Now these are both. I'm, I'm posting the compute stick links and the the one that has the compute stick links at the top, as well as some of the mini PCs. And I'm also going to um, do the mini bare bone. Uh, one which I kind of like because they're a little bit more powerful and they let you put in your RAM in whatever storage you want and build it on your own. These things are extremely simple, extremely simple to get up and running even if you buy a bare bone. They basically, you, you put in one stick of RAM essentially and attach your storage device and your storage device can be a USB external device as well. So, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of time you'll be setting up on that is usually quite nominal. The processor is usually already installed with a few exceptions. Um, particularly getting back to this list though, um, all uh, what you'll start to see is that you're going to see uh, processors in the range of anywhere from 1 to, to roughly 2 gigahertz in these small form factors and you're going to be talking about RAM in the range of 2 to 4 gigs. Um, on the higher end, if you're going closer to 300, you can get more RAM and you could potentially even get socketed processors. Um, but um, I think as um, uh, I'll give you some performance rundowns, but these are very fast units, and um, I chose a quad-core one based on a Celeron 2930. It's uh, running at, uh, it maxes out at uh, 1.8 gigahertz, and it's uh, it's a quad, complete quad-core without hyper-threading. So it's a very interesting chip, and um, I find it is more than effective enough to run Kodi, and it was effective to run, um, at the time I didn't, Windows 10 wasn't out. I ran Windows 8.1 on it briefly, and it worked just fine. It maxes out at 4 gigs of RAM, the unit I got. Um, but again, that's more than enough for light computing, and certainly way more than enough than you might ever need for uh, uh, Kodi, um, especially the way I'm going to show you how to implement it. Um, so any of these options are uh, effective. Just make sure you know what you're getting. They all vary, and the model numbers aren't always exactly expressive of what you're getting. Um, like this is a 1.4 gigahertz chip and it looks like the model number would be potentially better than what I picked out, but no, that's not the case. Um, and then you have the atoms, which are probably the lowest end ones. I would probably recommend against those. They're, they're a little, uh, they're less powerful and uh, if you want a little bit more oomph in your box, a bit more responsive and experience, it probably um, avoid the lowest end processors. Certainly the i3 is probably more than enough though. Um, Celeron probably I think is sweet spot in there, the Bay Trail Celerons particularly, or newer, uh, uh, are probably the what I would consider to be the, um, the ideal. And that's all for that page. And now getting back to this page, which again is my favorite because these typically um, 
you know, give you more expandability options. Again, I'd stay away from the um, AMD. Those are lower power chips, although they have very good integrated graphics if you are thinking of a gaming box. But even Intel's integrated graphics is more than capable enough for decoding uh, HD video for media center purposes. So I'm not too uh, concerned uh, about the graphics that's um, available on these units. But the processor, I think, is a little bit more important, particularly if you're going to use uh, a box like this as potentially a replacement router. I'll go into that at the end, but you could essentially flash a, a router based, uh, a, a router um, uh, uh, adapted firmware uh, for, excuse me, uh, an operating system, Linux OS, but basically with the extensions to make it a very powerful router. You know, and Linux is good with networking, and you can create your own router box effectively from one of these small units. Um, we were thinking about using something like PFSense, but we'll get into that later. Um, you know, I've seriously considered, I got like a little um, a Chromebook um, about the size of that Zotac on your screen there, maybe a little smaller. Mm -hmm. I'm about that shape. And it's um, it's a i3, 2 gig of RAM, 16 gig SSD, yeah, wireless, yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. I was actually thinking about doing something with that in the way of a network gateway or something. Maybe. Oh, absolutely. That, again, ideal, those types of units. And, and the one I picked out, too, and this is something you want to consider because some of these larger units will have fans on their processor, depending upon the processor that's involved. The unit I got, I got specifically to be silent. I didn't want it to interfere. I wanted it to be in 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 rooms where you were typically doing something other than you know listening to the drone of a, or you wanted to listen to the drone of a of a of a fan in the background. So um, kind of important when you're watching a movie. Yeah, kind of important when you're watching a movie, and you also don't want a loud router too. I don't think, particularly if you're you know it's in a room where you do other things. So. Um, I uh, certainly would consider you pick a unit um, that provides performance, but also can do that within a power envelope that allows for passive cooling. Um, oh, hey, um, before you roll on, someone in the chat, obviously PC, PC Repair, Phoenix PC Repair says, what's oh, up? Good to see you yeah, live streaming yeah. most of the week. And I would say, um, good to be here. And just to remind you, um, the format of the show is still, if you have any questions, comments, or issues with our products, let us know about that, and we'll stop what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, that always comes first. That's, that's why we're here primarily. And then other than that, we're filling the time with interesting tech knowledge. So take it away, Michael. Well, thank you. Uh, but that was important to say, so with, I'm, I'm glad with you that, With that little interruption, too, I'd like to note that I was looking at these PC sticks, and it looks like this is one uh, computing area where if you buy Linux on it preset, it actually comes cheaper than the Windows version. So. Yes, yes, that's true. However, on the compute sticks, the Linux version comes with less storage, I believe. Um, and it probably it needs less, less RAM. <laughs> yeah, it, but, yeah, it probably needs less, they, too. But they, have, they have about the same amount of storage, but the storage they're using is micro SD chips, and a 32 gig one of those is 12 bucks right now. Yeah. So again, oh. very economical for a lot of these units to um, to fill them out if you get a bare bone one to, to put the RAM in them and the storage. It's a minor, minor expense this day and age. There's another one that's received a lot of popular attention, the L Liva. I don't know what you call it. Um, but um, uh, L-I-V-A. Uh, but it's. I think a, you make it an E-ish sound when there's only a few letters or it's followed by a... I don't know. Never mind. Anyway, the Liva and the Liva 2, this is the original one. It was uh, well-reviewed in the Liva 2. Uh, here's another Liva one down here. Where's the Liva Viva? Las Vegas? Liva, Liva. Where's the Liva 2? I know it's down here somewhere. You, just, you were just over one of them. Eh, well, whatever. Anyway, uh, anyway, but they, they come in a variety. You, you know, there's so many to choose from. Basically, I pick the one that works. There's uh, one right there. Leave a uh, two. The uh, two. Yeah, yeah, the new ones. Uh, Braswell. Oh, yeah, yeah. The newer, the newest. I've generation. never heard of that brand. Um, uh, it's uh, Elite Group, ECS. Oh. Uh, um, but in they do. Uh, but you're these. talking about them like they're decent. Well, they, this was well. This was a well-reviewed unit. I'm not saying the company has yeah. an illustrious history or anything, but this right, was a well-received, right. well, uh, 
uh, interesting. Than yeah, that. I mean, I guess every once in a while something good comes out of something bad. But anyway. Zotac's been doing this a long while. They're well respected in the field for many PCs. Um, MSI has been doing the reviews. MSI is fairly uh, reasonable. Okay, for this particular one, but. but uh, I, you know, MSI is reasonable as well. ASUS, Intel, those are the, pr the brands you're going to be working with. Gigabyte, um, uh, and I haven't messed with a whole lot of these personally. And I've got one from Jetway, a manufacturer I probably never recommend, but it fit my criteria when I purchased the unit, and it's been working um, excellently for me without problems. Can we, you know, can we so. see that one? Can you put your mask on and show us? Like, I, I really want to convey how small these things are. Cause just yeah, the so the, the picture is, 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 is hard. So let me see if I can find one that's the dimension of my box. Um, no, no, well, let's see yours. Well, you, um, I have to disconnect it, but I guess, okay. Yeah, don't do that. It, like, fits in the palm of his hand. Cool. Uh, yeah, um, but the, the dimensions of it are three inches... Um, uh, one inch high, three inch uh, width, and uh, four inch height. So that's nothing to me. So if you consider a piece of paper that's eight and a half by eleven, you're talking about a um, a very uh, inches, Brantley. Three inches. Let's think of some comparison. Yeah, three like inches. It's a wow. finger length. A finger length. I mean, <laughs> finger is that inches? Okay. Is that big? Probably... Um, I'm not even looking at your hand. No one caught that. Right, I'm so glad. Or are we just uh, ignored it? No, that's too big. That's too big. That's this, this that's is, this is too big. That box right there is bigger than my unit. Yeah, so that's I'm why I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Now we get a little juvenile, but. Um, Anyway, I've been that way. I'll just have it noticed. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> no, we oh, are, I noticed. Just ignoring it. <laughs> so, um, but the the one last one I couldn't ignore no more. Yeah. But let's say this is a I, I I would say this is a typical size for one of these units. And if we look at the um, specifications, let's look at the. Oh, this is a little bit. Oh, this is bigger. Oh, that's too. Yeah, big. that's eight inches. Yeah, that's yeah, like that's, my that's that's too big. But anyway, you want to look at the size <laughs> because it's hard to tell from these. It's hard to tell from these pictures, but. Um, what's what's the, uh, the the liver is really tiny. Where was that? Here, this dude is tiny. This dude is even tinier than mine, I believe. If you look at it, um, so let's look at the dimensions. So I was I was looking at a board like that. They have really interesting power supplies. What are the I think we've really messed up, Michael. Now, yeah. No, you <laughs> okay, you can look at this. Look look I at how tiny this around. is. Look at this tiny how tiny this is. Folks. Yeah, that's about the size of a pot. Well, that puts so it in perspective when you see it next to a, a, a Ethernet jack. So. Yeah, yeah. And a video port. Yeah, and a video port and uh, DB9. So, um, yeah, yeah, folks. This is, you know, this is the the type. This is smaller than mine, the one I got, but and it's a little less powerful um, and expandable than the one I got. But um, you know, this could definitely do it. It's very powerful. Even the Raspberry Pi too is sufficient to to actually run what I'm um, going to talk about next. So um, you have a lot of flexibility. And what's the cost of a Raspberry Pi two currently, Brantley? You just bought one, didn't you? It's well, the the board itself is forty bucks if you. Want to get a case for it? It's about another forty bucks, so you're looking at about eighty bucks, eighty-five shipping and everything. Yeah, so pretty close to 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 the cost of uh, these types of units here. But so um, really less cool. than forty bucks total. I guess I was not thinking about the board, but no one ever really talks about that when they talk well, about the, the inexpensive <clears throat> working with Raspberry Pi. The yeah. Raspberry Pi too. Yeah, that's the one thing the people case. don't consider unless you want to have it lying or flapping around. Yeah, it's. Yeah. it's Having a case is much nicer. Um, if you have if you have a, a thirteen hundred dollar three uh, D printer, though, you can print cases like no problem. So, <sighs> but yeah, those are really <clears throat> expensive right now. Just to buy a forty dollar case. So um, the next step in this journey here is uh, going to be figuring out what you want to do with this little box that you've got your hands on, whether it be a Pi or a Pi 2 or a um, one of those mini boxes or compute sticks that I was talking about. You need to put something on it to make use of it. And the most convenient way to make use of these I have found so far and the easiest to get set up 
um, is probably for um, a media center. Um, I'm a big fan of instant on boxes, and um, you know, if I were to buy uh, one of those uh, Fire TV sticks or whatever those things are um, that they sell. Um, you know, I would want a, a very easy experience and user experience as easy as it would be for me to flip through TV channels, basically. Post, post uh, the link in the chat for that page, too. Yeah, and this is OpenELEC. This is uh, basically, op um, ELEC stands for Embedded Linux Entertainment Center. And uh, OpenELEC is great. In, on my computer, it boots up in about, I would say, five seconds maybe that is that is one of the OS's available when you set up your Pi if you use the noob setup uh, mm -hmm. environment too so, mm -hmm. so um, it's I, I wish I want to see um, if we have some so, chance. I'm so, gonna actually so install this in a virtual machine but um, go ahead yeah. go ahead the, I was just I just couldn't help but notice they have their own box with this crap already on it yes they and do the have their own box with what this you were crap. looking at yeah, absolutely, and you can take that route too, but you know we're techs, and I just wanted to give you the background options, and I think you don't get a whole <laughs> yeah. lot of flexibility if you look at the details of this, what's in that box, although you Let's are guaranteed to have it uh, work. Um, what kind of flexibility are we looking for? That's 99 so, pounds too, so... Yeah, yeah, 99 pounds, which is going to be oh, a lot more than $100. Okay. And so we're only talking about 1 gig of RAM, 4 yeah. gigs of flash, and a 1.5 okay. dual-core yeah. processor, which is actually not even Intel yeah. compatible. Yeah, it does blow. So that's the reason why I didn't immediately recommend that. Well, thank you. Well, well, good. That's good to know because I, I would want to know. Yeah. But it, 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 you know, if you, again, if you Because I'm to all for, that was I mean, tech, techs or not, I'm all for at this age, you know. I'm all for ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. In, in absolutely. some things, in some absolutely. things, if you can buy it for relatively the same price with relatively the same stuff, then let's do that. Yeah. For me, that's Ab absolutely. That I'm, that I'm in complete power, agreement. But yeah, yeah, that is half the power, so that's not. So. Um, Okay, so basically, I'm, I'm going to download the, the, the most recent uh, version of this, but basically, let's go ahead and install this into a virtual machine, and I'll show you how easy it is to get set up and running. You may be enticed by the pre-installed aspect of that uh, one we just looked at, folks, but uh, to tell you the truth, really, it is not, um, it's a walk in the park to do it. So, um, let's go ahead. Now, the newest stable build is 508. Um, I haven't... Um, Oh, look, they have bills for everything, as you can see. So, Apple Raspberry TV. Yeah, even the old school Apple TV, although you get an older version of it because the, um, they've moved beyond the capabilities of the original Apple TV now. But um, let's see. So, anyway, 5955 is the newest one. I'm going to go ahead and get that because I haven't taken a look at, look at it yet. Um... So this is the update file in the disk image. Um, we're going to go with the disk image, which is what I would recommend. Actually, wait a second. Yeah, that's fun. Um, so get the image. <coughs> Gzipped, 157 megs, and apparently the download's slow here. Or maybe it's just me running over my VPN. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We confirmed that that's relatively low overhead, so I think it's just their site. But uh, yeah, they really could uh, have a faster back end to that. Yeah. I should have already downloaded it. <laughs> I didn't think 157 megs would be that bad, folks, but. Uh... Tick tock. <coughs> hey Proctor. Yeah. You got you got Johnny's lightsaber. She just realized she thought she left mine with you. But then I found out that I she got the green one, which is my wonky one. So she actually left hers with you instead of mine. 
But uh, which uh, right which now. one is it? Uh, she had the blue one. The With which kind of handle the um? I'm not worried about it. I think it's this one. It it doesn't make noise. Okay. Yeah. I typed that message B to you in chat that you'll notice in a few minutes because I thought Michael was talking and I really wasn't paying attention, but he wasn't talking, so I'm letting you know. Okay. <laughs> so guys, no, we'll um, say what it is because that's just too much. It's uh, it turns out to be a 306 meg <clears throat> image size, so you can see it's very small, and this includes both Kodi as well as a Linux operating system in 306 megs. So I can, um, I can assure you that you're not going to need to worry about storage space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and extract that. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good idea, Nick. Um, I think Michael was going to touch on that at the end of the show. What? Uh, I'm sorry, what was touch on what? Uh, Nick's idea for another show was having a comparison of Untangle and PFSense and if there are any alternatives, which I really haven't oh, found any to those absolutely. two. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I didn't know, but it's been years since I like looked and I was looking at setting yeah. something up like that again for next summer when the kids come back. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think going through a setup of those would be really good. I was actually looking at getting the hardware to do mm -hmm. that. So. So right now I'm uh, basically going to be doing... Um, let me stop sharing my screen, and then I'm going to share my uh, virtual machine, if I can. Where it is. Um, and um, I want to set up um, OpenELEC with this. So basically, I'm going to give it a name, OpenELEC. I'm going to pick Linux. I'm going to do Linux 64, other Linux... Um, 64 should be fine. I believe it's a yeah, it's 64 bit OS is the one I picked. Um, we're gonna give it. Uh, let's see if we can have it squeeze into 512 megs of RAM. Ah, actually, I'm gonna give it a but I bet it would run in 512 gigs of RAM. Actually, that's fine. Let's leave it at 512. Um, we'd need a very tiny virtual hard disk. Um, And we don't need a lot of storage. I'm going to show you. I'm going to put it down to two gigs of store. Oh, four megabytes. No, that's not. That's not enough. Two gigs. Who's like vacuuming in the background? Yeah, I'll, I'll mute myself. Okay, and then I'm just going to go into the storage, and, ooh, IDE, we can probably put a SATA storage on that, that's more efficient. Um, ah, it doesn't matter for this test, I'm going to delete this virtual machine anyway. Um, so, I'm going to... Um, Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, it's a uh, disk image, so I need to, um, <laughs> duh. So leave that, add storage controller, add floppy controller. Choose disk. Yeah, that's not those, it's not that type of image. An image is what you would uh, copy to the hard drive directly. Yeah. Um, so what did I? What do I got to do here? Um, down, download the ISO. Yeah, there wasn't an ISO. Was there? It was my mind. What did I do to set this up? You didn't download the ISO, Michael. That was. Uh, 
I know there isn't. Um, Did we say we were tax earlier? Did we tell the people that we were tax? Yeah, well, yeah. We're we did. we're still tax. It might not. Oh, okay. Might I was gonna say because I just left to wait for a phone call. I. Okay. Um, what? Make it right, Michael. I I just booted this to oh 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 I know what I gotta do um I know what I gotta do sorry good folks yeah it was the wrong download I need to extract it and build a I know what I need to do so update file to be a hundred percent fair I have had issues with running and booting certain things and VMs that. I wouldn't have on computers, but this is not one of them, I guess. Oh, give me a second, guys. It, it even <laughs> says on the top of the download page, these installer image files are hard disk images, not CD-ROM disk images. You cannot create bootable CDs from them. Well, thank you. <laughs> um... Sorry, at any rate, um, so we're going to extract this. For, for those, without, those out there wondering, um, I've worked with disk images since doing a lot of the Raspberry Pi stuff, and there is a Windows utility for it. I'll post the link in here uh, to copy it to uh, media. He's not going to be able to do it with his virtual media that he has there, but uh, it's WinDisk Imager 32, I believe it's called. I'm getting the download link pulled up here for you. Win32 disk imager. Um, basically, that would let you take a, a disk image like they have there and overwrite a drive via the USB. Oh, yeah, that's what I did with it. Okay, so on my old box, before I rebooted my system, I have Win32 disk imager like he's talking about, and yeah. that's what I have to use. Okay, you're, there you're we go. You're not going to be able to do that in your virtual environment. Um, you could boot to a, Win, a Linux uh, OS and then have your storage drive attached and then have your... Downloads folder is a, uh, a shared folder, and then uh, use DD in Linux to uh, overwrite that disk image. But that's a lot more than I want to walk you through over this. So, um, how about we just look for if someone does have a ISO image for this? Open elect ISO. Yeah, I, I, I created the I, I booted from so what you can do uh is is with the image is create a you know flash drive, but it will flash drive and that's what I did to set up on my Linux box. So um yeah, let's look for open elect ISMs. Yeah, I'm not seeing this. Looks like you are gonna have to make a flash drive and then boot to that. Yeah, okay, so um, let me get a small flash drive. Where's the flash drive? Um, let's see what kind of crazy small flash drive this is. So that link that I posted in there, people, you would need, and then you just uh, overwrite a USB drive with it. And then you can boot and install it to your uh, micro PC type deal. Um, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, though, like I said, with their noob setup link, you can uh, just use the image that they have there. They also have an image there, which you can do the same thing, just write it to your SD card. Um, but, so yeah, I'm creating the image right now with the W32 or Win32 disk image. I was actually going to say that the Raspberry Pi is a fun one just because you can play with all these things and it hooks up to uh, HDMI for your monitor output like those wind sticks did, but it gives you a lot more port options. You get four USB and a Ethernet port. 
and sound and everything going straight in. So I, I really like the Raspberry Pis. I'm surprised that I waited this long to get into them. I'm surprised too, Brantley. But bear with me. Um, got the image built in here, folks. They're fun little boxes to play around with. Um, and, um, okay, Proctor, um, are you with me? Are you going to do what you were, um, what I, uh, suggested there and, uh, stick, uh, the, your, yours is a little bit easier. All you have to do is go to Cody. And if you guys haven't been to Cody before, um, we need to get you to that web page as well. Um, you want me to install Cody on a Windows 7 box or Windows 7 virtual machine? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. So it's Cody. <coughs> Folks, Cody.tv. And this is the successor to Xbox Media Center, XBMC, folks. Did you put it in the video? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. Good job. Um, and so you want to, uh, yeah, if you go ahead and do that. Um, am I still sharing my screen? What am I sharing? Yeah, you're sharing the virtual box. Okay, so the write was successful on the imager. So let's go back to the virtual box. Let's see, what do I need to do with this? Um, boot hmm. order. Which Raspberry Pi kit did you get, Brantley? <clears throat> uh, I'll paste the link to both of the ones that I like. Uh, I got right, uh, cool. two different ones. One yeah, I want to order one and start playing with it. One of them came with the case and it's just passive cooling. The other one uh, I got the board and the case separately. I, I actually like the other one more but we'll show them off here. Does one of them have active cooling? Yeah, that's what the second one has. That's the one you like? Yeah. Yeah. So the first one, this one has passive cooling, and honestly, I really haven't had any issues with cooling at all, but this one comes with everything you would need to get set up. All you need basically is a keyboard and mouse, um, which I've found having so the, have the Logitech button. thing, like having the Logitech all-in-one unifier receiver it's really easy to just pop in and out and use the keyboard and mouse. The other one, it came in, you have to go to two different pages, but let me post the first one here first. So that's the first one, and I'll share off my screen here. This one. So this is the first one. Um, you can see it comes with the case. It's got actually two uh, heat sinks, one for the, I think that's the video card, and then one for the processor itself. But it comes with the power adapter, the HDMI cable, the Wi-Fi, everything you need to get started. Uh, the SD card already has the noobs image, so you can get set up really quickly and easily. Plus, they got a nice little uh, starter guide. That's a pretty nice one. The other one, which I'll post the links for both the ones that I got in here, this is for just the Pi board itself. Um, and just to note that power adapter is basically just a uh, USB uh, port. So if you want to use one of those battery packs that we've mentioned before, the anchor battery packs, or a uh, USB port on your computer, any of those will work to power this board. And this is the other one with the active cooling case. I'm posting that link in there. But yeah, it uh, has a nice little fan built into it. Uh, this is, it was like, it's 
in nine separate pieces. It, it comes pre-assembled like this, but like actually putting it together, like you have to layer, like you have to put the two bottom pieces on and then put your board in there and then fit each piece on. So just be very careful once you take those four white screws out that you, you don't want to get the layers mixed up or uh, move it around too much. Uh, basically, I had to take it and set it on the table, take all the layers off, and then put one layer on at a time, uh, picking it off. But yeah, this one comes with uh, even more stuff with it. Um, you get uh, sound cords with it, a nice little bag with it, a uh, Bluetooth and a wireless uh, card. This wireless card is actually better because this one can go into uh, access point mode. So you can actually make this a uh, wireless range extender even. Then you get the HDMI cable, the cooling fan. You get 16 gig uh, card. It's not preloaded, so you would have to load it yourself, but that's not that hard to do. And then you also get the power cord. Um, I like this one a lot more. I it doesn't have prime shipping though, but it does come in three different colors. I like the black one the most. And actually there's a ton of cases out for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we can just take a look at them. So you can get like a straight black one, straight clear one. Some of them are much cheaper. Uh, I, I went with the one I did because it had all that extra stuff with it, so that's that's why I liked it. There's another one with an active cooler on it. You can even get one that has the setup to put them in a cluster. Some really crazy ones. I mean, look at that thing. That's pretty. The Bell Air case. That's pretty hot. Um, an invasion alien looking one. A real sleek small one. I've also seen some things that you can have just a. Uh, you can uh, make it out of Legos even. So <laughs> really versatile in the casing options. Yeah, I I actually got it just so I could have a box to play around with Linux on, so I can get some of my Linux skills honed again and. It works really, really well for that. It's not a PC compatible, so you're not going to be installing uh, Windows on it. They did just come out with an embedded Windows 10 option, but uh, that one is actually like designed for uh, writing programs for, not for like using Windows 10. Like it's designed for writing embedded Windows programs. Internet of Things, Windows 10 is what they call it. But it has some interesting implications too. You can use Visual Studio 2015 and hook directly up to it and test your applications out on it live. And it's cool that they offer it for Raspberry Pi. I'm sure there will be some other things that will come along the way. Um, but the big difference, like I said, with those uh, compute sticks versus the Pi is the Pi is not x86 compatible, so you're not going to be able to just install Windows on it. You have to find somebody that has a pre-compiled image for it. Um, but it, there's so many options out there for it. It's pretty awesome. They have tons and tons of projects they can do, too. So Cool stuff. Uh, looks like you got your box set up there, so I selected you if you wanted to take over there, Proctor. All right. <clears throat> Not exactly sure all what uh, Michael wants to go over, um, but uh, to download Cody for Windows, go to Cody.tv. <clears throat> Click on Downloads, and uh, here's your Windows installer. Uh, go on the Windows installer link there and download it. Already have it downloaded, and uh, here it is right here in my Downloads folder. I run that puppy. <clears throat> basic installer and agree to their license and agreement that I didn't read. Um, you there, Michael? Yes. Any particular options? You, anything you want to talk about during through this installer? Uh, no, I don't usually do it under Windows, but uh, scroll through, but I think it's probably fine. You probably just want to leave the defaults. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. 
I've been meaning to play with Cody for a long time, but haven't had the time. But just to reiterate, if when doing this under Linux, if you boot to a USB stick, uh, the installation of it takes uh, you know no more than about five to ten minutes uh, with OpenELEC. And again, Cody's pre-configured, so just one installation, and you're up and running uh, with it. So that's uh, I would consider to be the ideal one, particularly when it can boot up in just a few seconds versus uh, loading Windows and then you know launching Cody. Um, but um, you'll get um, an idea of so what the actual Cody experience is. And just to, uh, just to make it it's... clear here, what what the difference is that you're talking about is this is basically like a media center app. So something like Boxy or Windows Media Center, which has been removed from Windows 10 on. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's another reason why people are looking for you know uh, other alternatives uh, out there for these types of things. But uh, the Open Elect is a full operating system configured already for this app, basically. Yeah, and it basically only it's an operating system that only has one application, and that is Cody. <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why it boots up as quickly as it does, and uh, why there's uh, as little overhead and as low RAM requirements and everything else. Um, so, so, so for anyone out there watching, basically you can have the Windows, or it looked like they had other alternatives as well, where you can just install it as an application on your computer, and then have your computer as a media center. So if, like me, you have your TV hooked up to your <coughs> computer, you can just do it that way. Or if you have your TV out in the living room you want to set up, you can go the embedded route where that's the only purpose that you're going to be using that device for. Then you can easily set it up like that. Theoretically, if you could connect your phone to your TV, you could use uh, install Cody on your phone and have it be your media center. So yeah, it looks like they have it for Android and for iOS jailbroken. Yeah, yeah, so for something like, uh, for if you have a Chromecast, you could actually use the Chromecast full screen to cast it to your computer as well. So if you already have an Android phone, Chromecast is 35 bucks, so it's even cheaper than getting a Raspberry Pi in case. Um, you can Chromecast your entire screen while you're running Kodi, so that's another way to get a multimedia center. On mm -hmm. your TV, so. Lots of lots of options that are relatively low cost. We're not out there to try to find the most expensive way to do something, but uh, we just want to give you guys the options and, and tell you that uh, you're in control whether you build your own or uh, or do something like the Chromecast, as he was suggesting. There's a lot of options for getting this done, and um, the cool thing again is that you're going to be running this on your TV, so you want an you want an interface that's going to be amicable to that. You want one that's going to be easily accessed from a remote control. And uh, I believe once he gets Cody fully installed and started up, I think you'll be able <coughs> to see that. Oh, wow. I, I wanted to check into Boxy since I haven't looked into it in a long time, and apparently they've uh, been bought out by Samsung. <laughs> Fun. And that their stuff is going to be on... Uh, Samsung stuff now. Interesting. They did that back in July 10th, 2013. That sucks. That was a really awesome program. It was like a social media media center. It was pretty sweet concept that they had there, but obviously too sweet. I was actually watching uh, some of the when Hack5 went to CES in Season 4 they were talking to the maker of Boxy, and that's how Boxy was planning on making their cash flow was by uh, having large people pay for them, and apparently that plan went so They got oh, yeah, they, yeah, that paid for them. Well, it paid for them, but all of their users now, we can't even use the software anymore, it looks like. so. And that was really awesome software. So it kind of sucks that they build up such a large following and then ditched them. That's that's the worst sellout. Like if you sell out like that, that's terrible. All right. Well, I have Cody installed. Excellent. We'll run it. Oh. 
Huh. That's not good. I don't know if that's an issue because oh, of the oh, what. it is. It's, it is an issue with the virtual machine. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do it. It needs access to your hardware. Um. <clears throat> well, you can uh, uh, close out of that proctor and you shut down the virtual <clears throat> machine. Yeah, just power it off. And then uh, you can open up your settings. 3D support. Uh, go ahead and jack that all the way up. And say okay. Uh, wait, actually go into system first. Make sure you're, you're full access on that. Uh, processor. Enable the PAE stuff. And acceleration, just make sure you got that on. All right, now say okay. Yeah, yeah, I need Phoenix. all that for malware. And rule. install the guest editions if you haven't yeah, already. That's what I was about to say. Once you get in, install the guest editions and make sure you select the option to install the 3D acceleration DirectX stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, P uh, Phoenix PC. That's that's exactly how I feel. Like that all that program was awesome. Boxy was really really cool. Um, yeah, Samsung's gonna ruin it. Well, they already have because I don't see any awesome Samsung products that look anything remotely like. Well, no, they integrated it into their TVs. They integrate if you if you have a new Samsung TV, they have a um, I forget what it's called, but they have some media center app that's based upon Boxy. I've seen it oh. on my friend's TV. Oh, well, I haven't seen a newer Samsung TV like that then, because the Samsungs I saw did not have anything awesome in them. <laughs> Well, it's. Um, I was wondering why it was as good as it was, and now I know why because of uh, Boxy. Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and do device install. So what, Brantley? Uh, down at the bottom of that menu. Install guest editions. It actually says insert, not install, but but I I want you to get that. Um, <laughs> my computer. Oh, your CD drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've never. Yeah, once it's in there, you got to launch the the disk. Oh, there you go. Run. Um. Yes. So Cody is open source Phoenix PC repair mentioned in the IRC chat. Also, anyone out there watching, if you're on YouTube or Google, you can join us at the at www.foolishtechshow.com. Uh, it's it's launched behind it. Nope, 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 nope. nope. It's launched. Yeah, you don't have it Next. No, uh, direct uh, check, check the box. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Yes. Okay, next. Or actually, uh, check the did box. That not check. You, did that not check? You had to say no to that or something. That did uncheck. I don't think you answered that second box correctly. I'm not. Nope. It Clicking not. without reading. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Clicking without reading. Now you broke everything. Oh my God! This is this is going down. Broke the internet. <laughs> the internet is gone. Broke the internet. <laughs> well, I'm Michael, the internet. Michael, how's your <clears throat> imaging going? Uh, I'm having a problem extracting the boot sectors from the the. I've got the de I've got the um. I've got the USB drive created. Um, I'm not sure what I can do with that at this point, though. I was trying to use uh. Uh, I was trying to use Image Burn to create an ISO from it, but it no, won't. No, you there. can't. Yeah, it's not an ISO file. You take the the USB drive and attach it as a virtual uh, to your virtual machine, and then you use the virtual machine to. Boot oh, it. I see what you're saying. Hold on. Wait a second. Oh. Wait a second. Wait a second. Where's my virtual machine? Okay, here we go. Um. So, uh, so Proctor, you might want to reinstall those guest editions and read what you answer there. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's actually, I was looking into one of these small form factor PCs um, to do what 
Nick was mentioning about uh, having an internet gateway and for anyone out there wondering an uh, internet gateway is a device you set in between your modem and or your router or it can be your router um, basically you could make your wireless router at that point just an access point and it handles all the traffic going in and out of your system and you can do reports on it you can block things with it uh, Network-wide ad blocking is one of my favorite features. You can do that with both PFSense and Untangle. Untangle is a, a fully designed Linux OS that's set up to give you kind of that web 2.0 feel for managing the internet gateway, and it does a really nice job of it. They also have the same features built into Windows Server, I want to say from Server 2003 up. I don't know. Uh, 2000 and NT might have had uh, internet gateway options as well, but they weren't as nice, and they're still not as nice as using Untangle or PFSense. And PFSense is another uh, Linux distro customized for the same purpose built, um, but it's a lot more advanced. You have to go through a lot more configuring of things and set up of things, so. It's a lot more powerful than what you can do with Untangle, but it's also completely free versus Untangle has subscriptions where some more advanced features you have to pay subscriptions for to be able to integrate them into your network. But Untangle gives you a lot of nice reports for free, and they do have free option that is good enough for home-based users. I think... Uh, Nick will be able to use it to manage the children on his network. Um, setting It's really easy to set up time limits so that uh, devices can only access the Internet during the time span <coughs> you want them to. You get reports on where those devices are going and all kinds of nice uh, features with Untangle. PFSense, you can do the same thing. It's just a lot more setup and configuration and not as Web 2.0 pretty to do and manage. So, um, At your age, Nick, as you put it, you probably mm. want to go with Untangle um, still. And I, like I, I was telling you, I would suggest Untangle for you and even suggest the subscription rates because if you set up Active Directory at your house then you can yeah. have it so that everybody logs in and they can be but on That's not going to happen and because and I don't have Active Directory on the 3DS and on the Kindle and on the Wii U and Yeah, well those devices I don't, use Windows, I don't even use Windows PCs, man. Those, yeah. those devices you still would manage by probably MAC address and filtering them out yeah. that way, but Yeah. For the various PCs you do have in your house, you could have them. Which only I use. What, uh, I don't need to manage myself. What's your name uses one? Not really. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, she does, but... <laughs> She's the, the least of ones. your management. Okay, so Brantley, you, you need to explain to me how do I mount this the, the, the USB drive in here. So you go to settings, mm -hmm. and you go to USB, mm -hmm. and then you select the second button down. For the USB 2.0? No. Oh, I Hold see. Hold on, I'll just share my screen. Second button down, and you want me to pick my uh, device USB that I've got part to, which is, oh, which is, which one is it? Oh, it's that one I see. Uh, I pick that, and then say OK there, mm -hmm. and then when you start the system, it will automatically attach that USB drive to there, and I think if you press F12, you can select which device you want to boot from. Oh, F12. Hold on, I got a phone call. Oh, somebody else got it. Hey, look, Proctor's got Cody set up, so this is what you, you get there. You get a... Uh, a nice interface for your media center. Um, you can also do things like... I like words. I like that it has words instead of, instead pictures, of pictures and, and 
hieroglyphics that mean that you need like a, a specialist to decipher. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, so Brantley, what that does is uh, Brantley, it, uh, the, the boot menu doesn't allow you to boot from the USB drive. Oh. Well, I guess you'll just have to figure something else out. Yeah, okay, but let's go ahead with uh, with what uh, he's got. So, but, the, but basically, this is the same exact interface that um, I see when I boot up um, my open elect box. And so the same exact thing here. You got the large screen interface. It works with the remote control if you've got it under, if you have a remote control uh, capable of attaching to your uh, yeah, so like this, a little bit. I got a, a nice remote control that uh, can attached to my computer and I can move the mouse and do various things. You probably Rooster get other ones that are cheap. But, any, but um there's uh there's some um, some additional um uh repositories um go on. Uh I I I want to make sure there's um a new and then that <laughs> There's um there's unofficial Cody add-on repositories and um these can um I'll post them these contain just be careful because again they're unofficial and um be wary let's see oh look at that you can actually download uh, open elect virtual machine images. Hey, that would have been convenient, wouldn't it? Yeah, for Michael's uh, Michael's show of it. Hey, I think I'm going to go do that now and skip the whole show. What are you going to do? Shows. Download the virtual machine of everything I already set up. Where room. where are those uh, the v yeah. where are those images? And I'm gonna Chromecast it and forget about xbmcnightlybuilds.com. Everything you know I've talked about. How are you going to Chromecast it from your PC? I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're not doing that, so. I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll do it. Don't worry about it. I'll you, show you. you. There's no way you could do that. I'll show you. Don't worry about it. You'll see. I, You'll be I am definitely worried. not worried about it. I hope you're hungry. Uh, it doesn't look like any of those are actually live links, though. Did someone say food? Nick did. Apparently <laughs> he's hungry. Anyway, there's a repository you want to typically add SRP.NU. That's all I'll say about it. Okay, so that made no sense to anyone involved, but thanks for that. You could have said a little more. I don't think you can. Oh. Uh, Phoenix PC has a question for you there, Nick. Here's Super Repo. Here's the here's the instructions on getting Super Repo installed. If you want some additional um, applications for Cody that give you access to some cooler stuff, but um, again, I don't want to go into details on the things you, you can do with Cody. But Cody's Cody's a great media center application. It can mount ISOs. It can mount disk images, it can mount any file type you could ever imagine and automatically play it. You don't need to know what file type, whatever you, however you store your media code, Cody is able to access it. So it makes it very convenient. You could also, excuse me, you could also do live streaming with Cody. Um, and there's a lot of uh, websites of TV stations from around the world that are streamed to Cody that you can um, get access to. Um, probably enough to replace your TV as long as you don't require that all the channels come from the U.S. Michael. We have a, we have a serious question in the. In the Do we? Okay. We're yeah. To drop everything and. What is the serious over. question? What is the serious question? So Phoenix PC says in the chat, "Hey guys, how is D7X coming along? I know Nick is making good progress, but I think you guys mentioned something about possibly releasing D7X next month, or was that something to do with Kill 'Em All?" And that was something to do with Kill 'Em All, but let's let Nick take over the rest. But of it was week. next week, and that was last week. What should we take over? We're doing more testing. Um, but no, that was next week instead of last week. Was um, it was Kill 'Em All that we're releasing uh, the first edition of it? Yeah. 
So we're going to be... And... Go ahead. Are we going to be getting to that this week, or...? I'm hoping so. Are we? Awesome. I'm waiting to test it. Send me a test build whenever you're ready, man. Test the test out of that. Test the test out of that. You have a test build. Okay, that's... You have, you have a test build, don't you? A recent one? One that has the TN installer features that you said you needed to have? For the no, 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 no. You don't have a test build with that. Yeah, that's what we need to test the test out of. I was working on that while I was waiting on the test build stuff. Let's talk after the show. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I mean, everything worked fine in the last test build that I oh, had. Come on, I gotta go put out the uh, integrating the installer right now. Trash, 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 trash. I was going to release it without that. Uh, everything worked fine except for the command line stuff showing up on mine. I think it showed up on yours, but. I don't know if it showed up online in the most recent build. Let me know. Because uh, it should. I can test it out right now. Can I share my screen for this testing? Sure. I mean, you could just tell me. Well, I mean, I'm sure the people out there want to know. Phoenix PC would like to know. Get a sneak, sneak peek. Uh, let's get the latest one. You do not have a recent build. All right, well, considering you just told me I had one. <laughs> you don't. It's dated the 8th. That's how I know. Okay, well, do you want to get me a recent one? It should be one? dated last week. Do you want to get me a recent one? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying, oh, for any particular reason. I was questioning um, that. I was saying, oh. All the command lines on this one is working for me now. Well, then you don't need a recent. I told you. Are you still going to get me a recent one? Yeah. We'll show this off while we're working, though. 
So this is the new kill them all. Uh, basically when it starts up you're asked if you want to go ahead and start closing things. We'll just go ahead and say yes here. You can see it'll go through and try to terminate things. I just run it prior to this so it doesn't have a lot to kill or that it can kill again. Um, you get nice failure things if it's not able to kill it. Uh, application paths plus you get uh, command line options. You get skipped options with command line options what they are so your SVC host you can actually tell a little bit more about what they are and why they were skipped. Um, these are all based off the internal whitelisting. Um, but yeah that's about the most in this one. Uh, he has added some nice features as you can see you can resize full screen uh, it's got and that's that's horrible video. that that actually that code is is still it's not looking right you could do yeah, always on top restore windows position so like if we close out it should restore to full size it will if you pay for it uh -oh. <coughs> well, I have to pay for it apparently uh, it's got mm -hmm. a fast startup mode so I think now when I do it it'll just jump right into killing things. Uh, we'll go ahead and launch some stuff here. Um, it's in the new one is in there. Okay. I'm just gonna launch some stuff with this old one. Do the fast startup version. And we can see it killed everything except crypto prevent. Is that because crypto prevents in the white listing, so Awesome, awesome. Let's look at the new one here. Oh, I don't think the, it's not running for me. Sorry. All right, I'll make another folder for it. We'll see if that does it. Hmm, that's so weird. It fails to run for me on Windows 7. Uh, same here. No, it's not the same there, actually, but... Oh, it's failing to run. Yeah, I get an access violation. <laughs> So this is why we're not releasing this past weekend and we're doing more testing on it. Well, I've been working, no, no, well, see, um, it w works on Windows 10. <laughs> works on Windows XP. Uh, for me, anyway. But you can see some of the great features and advancements and some of the options that you'll have uh, further mm -hmm. down the road. Like uh, the uninstaller is going to be incorporated with it here. Uh, IFEO modifier is going to be incorporated with it there. And then being able to allow certain programs to run on your own without this whitelisting. Uh, you can even kill your uh, safe programs if you want to. Uh, not in this version, but you will have that option. And you'll have a file inspection path with the tech version, I believe, is what we're going with that one. So lots of new features coming to it. It's looking really good. Uh, Nick's still got some coding things to do on it, though, you can see. And we got some testing to test the tests of the tests. But it should be amazing. Uh, once everyone gets their hands on it and they should all be very impressed with it we feel um, and then that kind of gives you a glimpse onto what D7X is going to be uh, as far as all new features all kinds of revisions enhancements and past everything so but on that note we are past our 
normal hour time limit here. Uh, PC Phoenix or Phoenix PC Repair. I don't know why I'm so dyslexic with that name this morning. Um, did you have any other questions or anything else you wanted to see about those? So I think otherwise we're going to let uh, the show go for today and be back tomorrow. Proctor, were you going to do tomorrow or were you going to stick with Thursdays? I think I'm going on Thursday. Okay. So tomorrow we'll have some more stuff. Um, well, actually, Tank, did you want to do that show that I discussed with you tomorrow? Yeah, we can do that. Awesome. So tomorrow we're going to have a survivalist pack, or what What would you call it, Tank? My, I got a lot of stuff and had to put it somewhere pack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I believe this um, is going to be a great episode. I've been talking to uh, our tank commander there for quite some time about his uh, his preparation, preparedness rather for certain situations. And I don't know, yeah, if survivalist is the appropriate I, word, I think but what it's really called as a go pack. If I'm not mistaken. I think so, a go pack slash. I don't know how to do anything small. <laughs> well, but the point is that uh, I think for all you people out there who find yourself a little bit too dependent upon technology, too dependent upon the ease of use of modern society, that um, maybe want to get back in touch with uh, you know what it might uh, what might happen if the power went out and didn't come back on for a month, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I think it'll be a great episode, and I urge you all to join us tomorrow for that. It'll be a little bit different, but I think still in line with what we all love. So that'll be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, you can watch us at www.foolishtechshow.com or foolishit.com slash live. And also join the live chat there. Uh, most of us hang out in the uh, IRC chat throughout the day and night, so feel free to jump in there anytime and talk to us. We may be there, may not be. During the shows, we'll definitely be there. Otherwise, you can check out the previous episodes on that page and as well as our YouTube channel. And we'll have this one up on the YouTube channel after this and have anything editing out that we needed to do. So it will probably be posted shortly after this. If you missed any of it, you can go back and watch it. But, yeah, otherwise, <laughs> join us tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us. Yes. We will not edit out the schlong jokes. So. Yeah. What? We didn't even have to go that far to point out that point of it. But and if you miss those, then rewatch. Oh, let's, let's keep this civil. Anyway, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, uh, Phoenix PC Repair, for watching and asking the great question there. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye, internets.